tonight's scaffold between police and protesters at hands off our hotels demo leave some protesters hospitalized on the day the NDC minority and organized labor joined forces for a street protest against sale of four top snake hotels to a Greek minister, Brian Champon's company. Promptly dismiss his appointees within his cabinet and those on the snake board and snake management for engaging in this scandalous transaction, which violates multiple laws and does not guarantee value for money. We'll hear from the presidency as it assures steps will be taken to address concerns raised in 15-point petition to President Takufado. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. Chaboy! Hey! Chaboy! Chaboy! And tonight, some protesters have been left hospitalized following a scuffle that broke out with the police at the hands of our hotel's demo here in Accra. The NDC and his minority parliament joined forces with organized labor to pull off the street protest against the sale of the four top hotels belonging to the Social Security and National Insurance Trust to a company owned by the Greek minister, Brian Champon. And the protesters are tonight demanding the immediate dismissal of government appointees on the SNIT board and the SNIT management itself for the involvement in a proposed sale of 60% stake in the four hotels. Now listen to North Tong MP Samokuyuta Blakwa, who has been leading the crusade against the sale of the hotels. Uh, he was present today uh, at that particular uh, demonstration. In fact, led it and he also read out the 15-point petition to the presidency at the end of the protest. Then I go for the, to immediately stop the sale of our state hotel. Two, we take the view that state assets should not be sold, especially profitable ones. Historically, since 1966, the sale of state assets has not been in the supreme interest of Ghana, and we therefore cannot continue on that destructive trajectory. In any case, the government should not sell workers' properties without the permission and consent of workers and all Ghanaians. It is wrong, immoral and unethical for ministers and government officials to buy state assets. President Akufuado must not preside over this detestable and dangerous practice. Only when he assured the nation that his appointees who want to make money through such transactions should rally in the private sector. Five. A loss-making Brian Champions Rock City Hotel, according to GRA filings, should under no circumstance be allowed to purchase our state hotels, particularly profitable ones such as Labadi Beach Hotel and Ridge Royal. And if you look at the case of Labadi Beach Hotel, they posted profits of 158 million Ghana cities in 2023, paid dividends to government of 25 million Ghana cities only last year. And according to their auditors Deloitte, they have cash reserves in excess of 58 million Ghana cities in five bank accounts. This cannot be struggling hotels. The SNIT hotel sales has all the characteristics of classic state capture, which must be cancelled without further delay. Seven, we are also appealing to the president to instruct the Blay family to stop the illegal encroachment of Labadi Beach Hotel's beachfront. They should also stop issuing threats and just listen to the concerns of Ghanaians. It is a national embarrassment that the Labadi Beach Hotel has become the only beach hotel in the world without ownership and control of its beach front. Eight, the Blair brothers should be made to respect the initial joint venture agreement with Labadi Beach Hotel and compensate Labadi Beach Hotel for the financial losses their reckless conduct has occasioned. Nine, State assets should not be deliberately run down so that politicians will successfully sell them to themselves. Ten, 
The Honorable Brian Champo and all politicians and politically exposed persons should never be allowed to buy state assets. 11. It must be understood that state assets are for all Ghanaians, not a few greedy, unpatriotic politicians. 12. If our state hotels are good for Honorable Brian Champo and the Blay brothers, then they must be good for all Ghanaians. 13. The government must explain to Ghanaians why the so-called saviors of struggling SNIT investments are not interested in saving real massive loss-making entities such as STC. Is it because they are not profitable? 14. President Akufuado should promptly dismiss his appointees within his cabinet and those on the SNIT board and SNIT management for engaging in this scandalous transaction, which violates multiple laws and does not guarantee value for money. 15, last but not the least, we call on President Akufuado to commit to assenting to a private member's bill, banning all politicians and politically exposed persons from buying state assets when Parliament concludes the bill and forwards same to his office. Well, the protests also received massive support from the minority leadership in Parliament. Uh, there today was the minority chief whip, uh, Kwame Agboja, who says the sale is evidence of the state capture that has become a feature of the President Akufuado led government. If you try, sell this hotel to Brian Champon and see whether he can actually take possession of it. That our constitution say resist oppressors rule. If you know something is right, if you see somebody murdering somebody, you don't wait and go to court. You make an attempt to, to stop the person from committing the crime first. Yeah. This is an attempt, what we are doing now, is an attempt to stop the commission of a crime before we go to court. So it is quite clear. Even if it's Okujeto's company who is buying this, we shall resist it because SNIT hotels, majority of them are more profitable than Rock City. That is a fact. All options are available to us. This is option number one. Options number two is in Parliament. Others are still available to us. Can you disclose the others to us? When we get to that bridge, we shall cross it. And my colleague, Master, about what's with the protesters all through and joins me in the studio right now. Let's, let's talk about the reports that some of the protesters have been hospitalized. Yeah. What happened? Well, it was a long walk um, from the Labadi Beach Hotel all the way to the Christ the King Parish, um, eight kilometers of walking, which created a bit of gridlock um, in the capital city. And the MTTD police personnel had a difficult time controlling the traffic um, because at various intersections, sometimes you have the protesters um, standing right in the middle of the road and not moving. Um, but at the end of the day, when we got to um, the point where they were supposed to and um, the protest. That was when the scaffold actually broke. Where was this? So this was about 100 meters away from the Christ the King Parish. Um, I'm told um, by the not tongue member of parliament. Someone That's almost told. the Jubilee House intersection. Exactly. Very close to the Jubilee House intersection. Um, I'm told um, by the not tongue member of parliament that they were supposed to end the protest at the Christ the King Parish. Um, but when police saw the numbers, um, they moved their barricades about 100 meters away from the Christ the King Parish. And that was what created the agitation among some of the protesters who felt, who, who felt that, no, this is not what we agreed on. We agreed um, to converge at the Christ the King Parish. Now we've been moved away about 100 meters away from the Christ the King Parish. We want to get closer. Police had two layers of security. So they had their barricades and then they had formed a human wall um, behind those barricades. All the police officers, about 200 of them in route control gear. But at a point, we saw some of the um, protesters trying to jump over the barricade and get access um, beyond the barricade. That was the point I saw some police officers removing their pepper spray and they had to use the pepper spray. Mm, and you've been talking to the organizers of the protest, yes. and particularly Samuel Kujeto Blackwa. Yes. Um, so Samuel Kujeto Blackwa tells me that he's going to ensure that parliament takes a serious view of this issue. At the time that we were speaking, um, the uh, conversation, the protest had just ended, and he said he was going to move straight away to the 37 military hospital where some of the injured persons were taken. Unprovoked, tear gas, pepper spray, and, uh, and a number of them uh, collapsed, a number of them got injured. 
totally unacceptable. The police have exhibited bad faith. We agreed that we will terminate at Christ the King Church. Christ the King Church. This is not Christ the King Church. So why take us by surprise and then on top of that, use pepper spray, use tear gas. We cannot accept that. We will look into this. I've told the regional police commander that parliament is going to take a strong view of this. And uh, you will certainly hear from us on this matter. Well, the General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Kwiti, was also there and was a witness to this. What is it that the NDC, the party itself, also plan to do about this? Well, he says they'll be meeting um, over the matter because they did not expect this um, to happen because the protests had largely been peaceful. Um, the entire eight-kilometer walk was, pe was peaceful without any scenes created at all. So just at a point where they were going to end, that was when the scaffold broke out and sort of like um, put a dent on the whole protest itself. What happens is that the people of Ghana simply have to know who it is we are dealing with. That we are dealing with a group that simply do not care. And uh, a group of this nature, the best way to deal with them is to first and foremost get them out of power. And the people of Ghana rally together to make sure that these people are prosecuted so that an example is set once and for all for generations to come. That you simply cannot become leaders of a country and become such a group of insensitive, corrupt, and caring people. So that's what it has to be. December 7 must be a day for the for the people of Ghana to speak and for the day for Nanaku Fuadu Baumia and the whole collectivity of insensitive, corrupt bunch that they are to actually face the music. So that an example is set once and all for this country. Finally, finally, there was a near scaffold um, between the protesters and the police. The police forced to use their pepper spray. We can see the water cannon also coming for it now. What do you make of that situation? Unfortunate because uh, I mean, what it is we want is simply, we, I mean, we are not having a problem at all with the police. They are at the very end of the lot of the suffering themselves. So our point is, no, we don't have an issue at all with the police. We have an issue with those who are, who are literally milking the country dry. So it's unfortunate that such a thing happened, but I'm happy that uh, calm has been restored. And how involved was organized labor in today's protest? You know they've held the press conference already exactly, yeah. and vowed that they're going to uh, you know, go on an industrial action if yeah. this is not dealt with, in, indeed cancelled. Yeah. Were they there? Were they there in the numbers? Yes, they were there. Um, we had reps of organized labor um, there at a starting point. We had um, two of them. We had um, Na Ayele Adefi of the TUC um, stepping into the bed of a pickup there and addressing um, the agitated um, crowd. She was quite concerned that we sort of seem to have like a tunnel vision of all issues. She was concerned that people always try to see things through their own partisan lenses of NDC and NPP. She thinks that this is not that NDC matter. It is a not, it's not NDC is not NPP. It's a national matter and all hands must be on deck to demand uh, you know of what the NDC is pushing. So we can hear from a rep and later now. Yeah. This is a struggle for the safety of Ghanaian workers. The future of our children the future of our brothers and sisters. This is about job security. This is about pensions. This is about ensuring that the ordinary worker does not go home crying. This is a match devoid of partisan politics. It has to do with the future of workers. And we are happy that you have gathered here in your numbers. This will succeed. This will succeed. This will succeed. This will succeed. Leave our hotels alone. Leave their lands alone. And what is it that we're hearing about? It appears in the background that yeah. uh, there, there was also a bit of uh, tradition at play here. Yes, Some yes. Priests. Yeah, so that's the unexpected guest um, at the protest. Not many expected him um, to make an appearance. That's the La Wulomo. Um, his name is Ni Yemo Obroni. He's the high priest of La who joined the protest and intermittently poured libation um, as the team made its way, um, you know, with the protest. And he said he was there um, because they are also not happy as Ghan people uh, about what he describes as the looting of state lands and the take taking over of their properties. I'm the chief priest of the land, so they are taking our property on lawful way without uh, we allow their master's consent. 
Do you understand? So if I'm a chief priest, I have to fight for my right because I have kids coming. Do you understand me? Yeah. So we need to tell the government that any land belongs to La Gadangwe. They should never dare. They should give our land to X. So that's a view there from the chief priest who was also there representing the, exactly. the state. Yeah. Uh, but also, finally, yeah. they got to present a petition to the presidency. Yes. Um, so the presidency was represented by the deputy chief of staff, Emmanuel Edumwa um, Bosman. He commended the protesters uh, for uh, conducting, going about this demonstration in a peaceful um, manner. He said he's received the petition, they'll be presented into the appropriate quarters, and hopefully um, they'll send a feedback um, to them. Um, we are delighted to pick it because it is part of the exercise of our democratic rights guaranteed under Chapter 5 of our Constitution. We are also grateful that this um, procession and demonstration has taken place without any negative outcomes. We are happy that the cooperation has gone on between the demonstrators and the police. We want to keep in the spirit of democracy. As you know, this year is an election year. We want to do everything in a clean, peaceful, and calm manner. So I have received this petition on behalf of the president. I will submit the same, and I can assure you that it will be looked into and the appropriate measures taking place as and when it is deemed fit and proper to do so. I want to bring in right now Abraham Kumsing. He's a secretary general of the Ghana Federation of Labour. Also joining me is Neil Ante Van der Poy, MP for Dodo Dodo, who himself was on the ground today. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your time here on Top Story. Uh, Mr. Kumsing, you just heard the, the deputy chief of staff say uh, they'll do whatever it takes to have your concerns addressed. Does that uh, deal with the issues that you put forward? Satisfied with what you heard from the president's rep? Oh, thank you, man. All we want, because it's very stressful to embark on these demonstrations. So, if the president had acted, you know, earlier on these issues, I mean, these demonstrations wouldn't have, you know, come in at all. But, I don't know whether the president, you know, is happy people hitting the street and making noise and all that. Because, this matter... We wrote, organized a wrote to the president wanting to meet with him, and he referred us to the uh, employment minister. We met the employment minister, and there was no solution. So we have to come back to the president. He wrote to us last week or so that you uh, will meet with us 24th or 25th of this man. But that is not enough. All we want is that, look, instruct that the process of the sale should, 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 should pause, should, should stop. You see, because as we are, you know, going up and down, doing all what we are doing, they are still, you know, uh, you know, they, they want to sell this, this property. So the, so process, the, the process has the process has not stopped? Simply, Given an instruction, so they, they, they put a stop to, to, to the process. That's yeah. all, Mr. Kumsing. So the process hasn't halted, it hasn't, it has not. Um, and I'm asking you, as a rep of organized labor, because you have four reps on the SNIT board, what is your briefing to you that SNIT is still proceeding with the conversations with the Rock City to sell it off? That is a problem. In fact, our reps have failed us. And yesterday I said it at a press conference that we lost the battle. Organized about we lost the battle. But fortunately, the MPs, you know, saw the need for them to help to, to deal with the matter. But we've we, we failed because we have left there. And they should have prompted us that, look, the development at the board level is, is not good for us. So this is it. We should come in. They never, I, I have no idea about what was going on until Honorable Ablaqua raised the red flag that, look, you guys sit up. That's how come we got to know that this program was there, that they were, they were about to sell this, this uh, uh, property. That's it. We didn't know. If our reps had informed us, briefed us, we could have taken action long, long, long ago without bringing in any, any, uh, uh, 
politician in, indeed. But but as so, we speak, but as we speak tonight, Mr. Kumsen, you are asking that the process to sell off the sixty percent stake in the four hotels be halted. Um, you are saying that your members on the board tell you that that process is still ongoing. Oh yes, they have not stopped it. Even, not, that's how come, even though, even though know, there's a petition before Shraj and Shraj is investigating this. Oh, <laughs> this bureaucracy! You know, even you know how things work in this country. I mean, the Shraj, how soon are they going to finish this? Shraj cannot injunct the process. I don't think they can do that. They don't have that authority to, to, to young the process. So they will still go ahead and do whatever they want to do. Uh, Mr. Oh. Kumsi, please stay with me. Let me bring in Ilante Van der Poy, who was on the ground. Of course, he's a member of parliament for the Dodo Dodo and a rep of the minority side uh, backing uh, this protest. Thank you very much, Mr. Ilante Van der Poy. So you're hearing that from Abraham Kumsi. Would you say that mission accomplished today you set out today with one goal to try and force the government to back off when it comes to the sale of the uh, four hotels you're just hearing from Abraham Kunsi say that process is still ongoing although the chief of staff says yeah you'll be head well thank you very much Ivan and let me say this I was at the demonstration one as a Gandangwe two as a Ghanaian who is entitled to pension and three, as a member of parliament, who thinks that what is happening is wrong. It is not in the interest of Mother Ghana and Ghanaians. Let me say this. As a Ghana Dangwe, I am ready to put my life on the line and resist this wanton grabbing and looting of Gadangwe lands. Enough is enough. We've had enough. And I'm urging all the youth of Gandangwe. Our forefathers fought, sacrificed their lives to protect our lands for us. Today, we have been entrusted with that responsibility to also protect it for the future generation. And from today, this is only the beginning. This is to serve a warning to any government, especially to Nanado and Baumia, that any attempt to further touch in the Garland will lead to consequences they will regret. Two, we want them to immediately, immediately take their hands off any Garland that they have improperly, improperly taken, looted, stolen. Three, this hotels we are showing them if they don't stop the transaction the next time we will not go on the street we shall take over the hotels ourselves if they can't they should take the hotel off our land and take it to wherever they will take it to and leave our land for us we are not joking the youth of gandangwe are not joking if i take it from me with my lips we are not joking if they joke with us it will be more than ogoni but taking over the hotel will be taking the loss into your hands, will it not? The, the, the hotel is on our land. If you don't want us to get what is due us, we shall not allow you to appropriate it to yourself. This government has been entrusted with the responsibility of taking care and taking custody of resources and assets that are. They have not been they've not been brought into power to come and instead of protecting these things and maintaining them, developing them, they were not brought in to come and loot them for themselves. And I said, the Ghanaian, I will be part of every process, every attempt by the people of Ghana to prevent this government from continuing with this their wicked intention of Ejadia. And the idea will not succeed. We've had enough of it, and we are going to stop it now. As far as the minority is concerned, the strategy that we had was to also use a parliamentary process to fight this. There's already a petition led by your colleague, Okidita uh, Blackwa, before Shraj. Aren't don't, these enough? If, if, Evans, don't even bother your head to ask me to tell you what our strategy in parliament will be. 
but I'm telling you, we have more targeted strategies to counter this, and we will employ all of them at one point or the other, and we know they will all be as effective as today's was. Today you submitted a, a 15 point petition to the presidency. It was received by the deputy chief of staff. He assured you that he's going to hand it over to the president and he says that it will be given the needed attention. How long do they have before you expect to hear from them or you take your next action? Well, the deputy chief of staff himself is a gun. And I know until Rebecca is a gun. I know the minister of interior is a gun. And I know the regional minister is a gun. I'll be expecting them. If they, ha they owe any responsibility towards the Ghana with people, I'll be expecting them to put pressure on the president to listen to the petition as a matter of agency. He should not treat this like the LGBTQ bill that his office intentionally and surreptitiously closed the door to. This one they should let him understand that Gama here a door. Gama here a door. Ame ime mi ewola. If you understand Ghana, Evans. And you know I do. Uh, the point you're making Thank is you. that the guys are pretty angry and their eyes are pretty red. Uh, Ibrahim Kumsin, you, you say today that the president, if you can clarify, has now agreed to meet with organized labor. When is this? Next week, I think 24th or 25th, but that's not what we are expecting. I mean, to meet and discuss. What we are saying is that stop the process. They should not continue. They should wait. They should stop it. That's all. We are going to meet him to tell us what. I will not be part of it. So you're, you're going to. So, you, so, so, and you represent, you are the general secretary of the Ghana Federation of Labor. You're saying you're not going to go for that meeting? I won't go there. I won't go. I don't know what I'm going to discuss. What is. It's as simple as just tell people that, look, employment minister, make sure this whole process is stopped. But that would be, your opportunity. But that would be your opportunity to put that directly to the president, face to face. Why would you deprive your, yourself and your membership of that opportunity? You see, they're, they're wasting time. And you see, they're buying time for this process to, to end, and that will be it. They can even visit the outcome of this thing, and then it becomes another another struggle. What is it? So it must be stopped. Stop it first. Then we can meet you. It's unfair that when you are in negotiations, what they are doing, it, it, it's amount to unfair uh, labor practice, as, as, as I'll, 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 I'll call it. You must be open. If you are negotiating, you must make sure that you don't intimidate, you don't, you know, harass the, your, your, whoever you are negotiating with. Make sure that there's a uh, level playing field so that, you know, that is how, that is how things work. But if you are not, you, is, is the president saying that he hasn't heard of this noise that is going on? You know that way. Doesn't he know our concerns? So we're going to meet him to tell us what. He should tell the people that, Master, you will stop. And let us engage labor or the stakeholders. You are not stopping them. Then you say you can meet you to discuss what? Even you, if you want, that's like almost every week. If you want, he's happy with such, you know, activities. Maybe he enjoys the music that is played alongside the, uh, the, the, the marching. So he, he continues to enjoy it. Thank you very much. That day is Ibrahim Kumsing. He's the Secretary General of the Ghana Federation of Labor. Earlier, I had Neil Ante Vanderpoy, MP for Dudu Duty. I want to hear from you on this at 055 99997. News night in a minute.